For 30 years I've been teaching this, and I've, I, I've taught this for West Point and Microsoft and Lilly and Delta, and, and, and the largest organizations and, and companies in, in the world come and say, John, teach the five levels of leadership, because they understand, they understand that if you and I today in these few minutes can understand how leadership works, and by the way, leadership's not a noun, it's a verb. It's action, it's moving. And, and if we can understand how to go from level one to level two to level three to level four to up, to up to level five in our leadership, we expand our leadership, we expand our influence, and we expand our effectiveness. So I'm ready to go. I know you're ready to go. Okay, here we go. Level one. We're going to start at the very bottom level. This is where you start. This is where we all start. The bottom level is the position level. At level number one, this is where we all start. We all start with a title. We all start with a job description. We all start with a position. Okay? And the key word at level number word, not level number one, the key word is rights, R-I-G-H-T-S, rights. In other words, people at level number one follow you because they have to. In other words, you're the boss, or you have a title, or you're the supervisor, and, and anybody that's under that person, they just basically follow that person. Now, this is the beginning of all of our leadership journey. We, we get a leadership position. In fact, people will come to me all the time, they'll say, John, I, I, I just became a leader last week. And, and, and when they tell me they became a leader last week, I know what they meant. They really didn't become a leader last week. What they really did is they got a leadership position last week. And by the way, the position doesn't make you a leader. I know a lot of people who have a position of leadership, but they're not a good leader. You know that too. You probably worked with them before. So the position doesn't make you a leader, but if you're a good leader, you can really make the position. But it's where we all begin. Now, the upside of level one is simple. It's a place where you and I get to shape and define our leadership. We get a leadership job, we become a supervisor, and now we begin to work on ourselves as a leader, and we begin to define who we are. That's kind of the upside. Now, let me give you the downside of level number one. The downside of level number one is the people who follow you will give you the least amount of their energy and effort. In other words, if they're following you because they have to follow you, if they're following you because that, that's what they've got to do to get their paycheck, if they're following you because that, you, know, that's, you have the position over them, if that's the case, they will always give you the very least of their time and of their ability and of their effort and of their mind. The good news is you don't have to stay at level number one. You can go to level number two. So let's go to level number two as quickly as we can. The first level is the positional level. The key word there is rights. I get certain rights, so you've got to follow me. Level number two is the permission level. And at the permission level, the key word is relationships. And at this level, people now begin to follow you because they want to. Now, there's a world of difference between following somebody because you have to in following somebody because you want to. Now, what happened between levels one and two? Well, what's happened is you have connected, you've connected with your people. You've not only connected with them, but, but relationally, they like you and you like them and you've got to know each other. And so now in this work environment, they're not following you just because you are a supervisor. They're, they're following you because you, you do have a position. You are a supervisor, but you are a supervisor that people like. Relationships, relationships with people are the foundation of leadership. You build your leadership off of relationships. Why? Because leadership is influence. And you cannot influence somebody that you antagonize. In this, on level number two, what happens is you begin to develop relationship skills. And let me just, let me describe the leader on level two. Uh, the leader on level two, they have three things that they do extremely well to be a relational leader. One is they listen well. In fact, they take all of their leadership cues from walking slowly through the crowd and listening. They listen well. Secondly, they observe they're conscious about where their people are and what their people are doing, and they're constantly observing them. And thirdly, they're learning. They're learning. And then in the process of listening, observing, and learning, they have an attitude of servanthood. They know how to serve. 
and, and if you're going to grow as a leader, you have to grow beyond your position, beyond your title. Yes, you have a position. That's level one. But the second level is relationships and the ability to get along with people. That's level two. Let's go to level number three. There's another level higher. The third level is the production level. The key word there is results. And at this level, you're starting to help the bottom line of the company. You're, you're starting to, quote, bring home the bacon. You're, at, at, at this level, you become effective as a leader, and you become effective as a leader on level number three because you produce. And the characteristics of leaders at level number three are, 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 are very common. One is they, they, they produce by example. In other words, they are the example for the other people that follow them how to be effective and how to be, how to be productive. You see, the greatest motivational principle in the world, the greatest motivational principle in the world is that people do what people see. There's too many leaders are like, they're like travel agents. They're sending people where they've never been themselves. And you want to be a tour guide. You want to take people with you. You want to say, this is the area where I've been. This is where, where I live. This is the area where I lead. Come along and, 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 and follow me. And at level number three, your leadership begins to gain credibility because now you are fleshing out for the people around you and you are modeling for them things that they want to see, and you are starting to produce, which something else happens. Because you are becoming productive in your own life, you begin to attract people that begin to be productive also. In the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership that I wrote, one of the laws is the law of magnetism, and the law of magnetism just says we attract who we are, not who we want. Level number four is the people development level. This is what I live for. This is what I strive for. This is what excites me. Something magical happens when you begin to understand the most appreciable asset you have in any organization is the people of that organization. And you begin to commit yourself to developing the people within that organization because how do you grow a company? You grow a company by growing people. And when you grow them, they increase their capacity. And when they increase their capacity, they begin to increase the capacity of what you can do and what you can accomplish. Successful people have discovered what they're good at. Successful leaders discover what other people are good at. Now you take them and say, okay, I understand what their strength zone is. I, I understand what their giftedness is. Now I'm going, I'm going to equip them. I'm going to come alongside of them, and I'm going to develop them, and I'm going to train them. And I use a very simple, for years, for many, many years, a simple five-step equipping process. It really works. Step one, I do it. It's that simple. You can't teach somebody what you can't do yourself. You know, we may teach what we know, but we reproduce what we are. So if you're going to reproduce yourself, you've got to be it yourself. So the first step is, is I do it. Step two is I do it and you're with me. I take you with me. Now we're going to spend time together. I'm going to be your mentor. I'm going to be your coach. You're going to watch me. You're going to observe me. You're going to see me in different situations. We're going to make sure that it works. We're going to make sure you're going to be able to ask me questions. Step three is now, now we turn it and I hand, I hand the ball off to you. Now on step three, you do it. You do it and I'm with you. Now I'm watching you and I'm, I'm tweaking you, and, and I, I'm, I'm getting, I, I'm, I'm, I'm helping you to get better, and I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm just really fine-tuning you. Step four is you do it. You just do it. You don't need me anymore. You know how to do it, and you do it, and you do it well. And many times people think that equipping stops at, at, at step four, but it doesn't. There's one more step that's absolutely essential. Step five is, is, is you do it, and somebody's with you. You've never really trained and equipped somebody until they can multiply themselves. That's where, that's level number four. It's a beautiful level to be on. It's the level where you develop people. Now there's one more level. That's level number five, the pinnacle level. The pinnacle level, the key word there is respect. You've done it so well with so many for so long The people just absolutely follow you. They follow you because of who you are, the qualities you have in your life. They follow you because of what you have done. And there's a great amount of respect. And it takes a long time to get to level number five. Most of us aren't there. 
all of us would probably like to be there, but it's a lifeline journey. And what I want you to understand about the five levels is that's exactly what leadership is. Leadership is an always ongoing, always learning, growing process. Okay, let me ask you a question. You've got the five levels there, and you can see them, and you can see how each one kind of leads into the next one. And probably the question you've asked yourself now by this time, because you're a sharp crowd, you've asked yourself, wonder what level I'm on. Am I on level one or am I on level three? Am I on level four? You've already done that. I know you have. That's what I would be doing if I'd be sitting there. I'd be saying, okay, where, where are you, Maxwell? And if you ask that question and you kind of go deep in that question, you're going to get a little frustrated because you know what you're going to discover? You're going to discover you're, that you're not on the same level with everybody. There was somebody you're maybe on level two. With somebody else, you may be on level four. Isn't that true? If somebody new came in the company, you're on level one with them. And what you're going to discover is that you're on different levels with different people. Now, I wish I had an hour to teach this whole process, but here's what I want you to understand. Here's your assignment, very simple. Take the people that you lead, put their names down, and ask yourself a simple question. What level am I on with that person? Do your best to kind of put a number there, and, and I know it can kind of bleed together, so it's not quite an exact science, but, but do your best shot. Because after you know what level you're on with each one of your people, then you're going to know specifically how to lead them. Now, here's the key. Whenever you try to cast vision with people in your organization, in your department, they don't see you based upon who you are as a person or as a leader. They see you through the five levels grid. And a person on level one, when you talk about a vision, a person on level one sees you entirely different than a person on level number four. The commitment level is much higher the higher you go with your people. So, therefore, when you cast a vision or when you lay it out for your people and say, this is where we want to go, just understand it may be the same company, it may be in the same building, it may be the same time, it may be the same speech, but the reactions are going to be different, and the reactions are going to be different because they're on different levels with you. So, take the notes, study them, apply them to your life, begin to be a student of the five levels of leadership, and I wish you well. Because leadership is influence, always has been, always will be. And within you, you have the power to increase that influence. God bless. Thank you very much. Have a great day.